Hey there everyone, Jason here from the OTSchoolhouse.com as well as the OT Schoolhouse podcast and thank you for joining us today. Today we are going to go over a little bit about what Double Time Docs is and how to use it. I'm actually going to show you how to first get started by logging on and getting your free 7 day trial over at DoubleTimeDocs.com and then show you how to actually build a report. Double Time Docs is this software created by Jason Gonzalez and uh, Scott, sorry Scott, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name. but. Um, these guys put together a program where you kind of fill in line by line and it helps you to create your your school-based OT or physical therapy report and I hear that speech therapy might also be coming shortly so stay tuned for that as well um, but so I'm gonna show you how to get logged in you get a free seven-day trial and when you use the code OT SH as an OT schoolhouse with the number 20 at the end OTSH20 you'll actually receive 20% off Jason and Scott were super cool to give us that special promo code just for just for us and just for you as a part of watching this video so thank you so much to them so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch this screen around so you can see what I'm doing on my computer and I'm gonna show you how to get started with your free seven-day trial as well as how to uh, build your first report so Let's go swimming and see if Ariel from The Little Mermaid needs some occupational therapy. We'll see you in a second. All right, so as you can see, I'm on the DoubleTimeDocs.com website, and there's a few things up here in this top right-hand corner. Eventually, I will come back and press that login button, but first I want to show you what happens when we click that free seven-day trial. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And here it says welcome and this is where you start off by putting in all your information so I'm not gonna go ahead and do this because I do already have an account set up and but I do want to show you real quick under your field you can click either occupational therapy physical therapy or coming soon is speech and language pathology so be sure to keep an eye on that if you are a speech therapist go ahead and enter in all your information and one last thing I do want to show you on this page is please, I would uh, be very thankful if you go ahead and click on OTSchoolhouse.com under the How Did You Hear About Us tab. That would help let them know that, you know, people are learning about them, about Double Time Docs through us. So very much appreciate if you would take the time to, uh, to put that in when you sign up for your free seven-day trial. So I'm going to go back to that first page, and I'm actually going to hit the login button so you can see what it looks like. I just created this new account a few minutes ago and so I do want you to see what it looks like for the first time when you log in. So I'm going to hit log in right here with my credentials in there and you will see this is what it looks like that very first time that you log in. And you'll see right here if you want to create a new doc you would hit create a new doc over here. Right here there's three different downloadable printouts. I want to show you each one real quick. The caregiver questionnaire, we'll let that download here, open and you'll see it's a caregiver questionnaire. Something that you can easily send home with the child in their backpack, email at home, mail at home, or even give the parent a call and kind of go through some of this. So I'm gonna close that and I'll go back here. The teacher questionnaire is very similar. I'm not gonna show you that one just because it's so similar to the, to the caregiver questionnaire, but I do wanna show you the printable questions. And the printable questions is actually the entire report basically except or what you're going to need to fill out when you complete a double time doc except it's all on a six page document so if you don't have access to doubletimedocs.com while you're kind of getting all this information you could easily print this out and just kind of circle stuff as you go along while you're doing your observations or testing and then you have the answers for when you go back and log on to double time docs so I'm going to close this out and show you now what happens when we create a new doc. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you'll now see you have one doc available. I am aware of that. So I'm going to create create new doc. And right here we open up. This is our very first document. As you can see, there's a little tour right here um, that you can keep on clicking next. and It'll kind of show you everything that works out. I'm going to kind of show you that tour right here in this video. So I'm just going to press end tour and I'm going to close this real quick. So you can see these are the categories, the main categories that you'll be filling out when you complete a double time doc. However, each time you click on this little piece right here, you can see there's so much information. This is all the background information. Um, for the student. Actually, it's just like the, the information that you would put right at the very top, you know, their age, their name, all that good stuff. 
then you get into the background information which is just there's a lot of stuff here um, but I'm gonna go over it with you in a second um, I'm gonna close this one up uh, but as you can see, there's many, many different areas. Eventually, you will get down into your summary and recommendations, which I will show you. Some other cool things on this page is that it auto saves right here. You can see that it auto saves every like 30 seconds or so. So you don't really need to worry about pressing that save button. But you should occasionally press save and preview. I don't think anything's going to come up right now when I press that because we haven't done anything. Okay, there you go. Just the very top information. Of the general general information and it has my name there because it knows I'm generating the report and it has the today's date which is uh, when this evaluation is being uh, being worked on being started so you can always change that if you'd like later and then you have save and download and that's when you're completely done you're gonna save and download your your template or your final report so that you can print it out and present it at the IEP so real quick, I'm going to close out Mozilla Firefox because I actually have a, a completed report already done. And here it is. This is another account that I have. And as you can see, I've got Ariel Triton's report here from The Little Mermaid. Uh, I have the date of this report as being completed in 1989, which is when the movie came out. And I'm going to go ahead and open, click edit so that we can go ahead and check out Ariel's report. And so the first thing I want to show you after I hit this edit page is the save and preview button. Remember I hit that a second ago and all you saw was the general information. Well now I've already gone through and completed all this and I'm going to go through it a little more completely for you. But what happens is when you press save and preview now, since I've done everything, look at all this narrative is filled in background and presenting concerns, evidence of information, validity statement. Everything is here now because I've already done it. And so you can see under playground access, Ariel is able to safely navigate the play structure at recess. So that's something that came in because I simply clicked on a button and it wrote that for me. So the other really cool thing about this is now say I want to edit this. Say maybe I was like, oh, wait, I lied. She can't actually access the play structure. I'm just going to click on this yellow highlighted sentence. And now it's going to take me exactly to where that question was and why I answered it wrong. So now if I say, oh, she needs supervision and I click save and preview, it's going to take us back to that section. And now it says Ariel needs supervision when navigating the play structure at recess. So that's kind of the gist of how this double time docs really works. It's that simple. You click on something and it changes the narrative for you in your report. There are places where you will have to put in your own narratives, such as like if there's comments, Whenever you see the, a comments box, you need to type in full sentences and complete sentences. Otherwise, it will come out segmented however you put it in this comments area. It's kind of like adding something to the end of a paragraph usually when you, when you have comments here. So I'm going to scroll all the way back up to the top. I'm going to close the motor skills and sensory motor de or development area. And I'm just going to kind of go through each of these sections relatively quickly. I just want to show you what's here so that you can go get into your your free seven day trial and uh, explore it for yourself there's a lot of really cool stuff here and when you're ready to just head on over to double time docs don't forget that you can use otsh20 as a promo code and you will receive 20 percent off and you can do that anytime within that first week and that that will give you actually um you'll get free three documents including actually when you do that before the seven day trial is over but First of all, general information. I already kind of showed you that, but I will go through. Ariel Triton, she's a female. Um, I did the math, and, and if the movie came out in 89 and she was 16 at the time, which according to Wikipedia she was, then she must have been born in 1973. Um, 16 years old. She goes to Atlantica Prep and evaluator as you can see on this one i did add my credentials at the end otrl so now at the top of that report instead of just saying jason davies it will say jason davies otrl and then when we open up the background and presenting concerns you can see i just use the standard purpose of evaluation or you can do a custom purpose of evaluation so i'm going to go ahead go ahead and click save and preview so you can see what the purpose of evaluation this is the standard purpose of evaluation every occupational therapy report should have something like this 
it oftentimes will kind of describe the difference between school-based OT and medical-based OT and what we can assist students in here at school. So be sure to check that out and modify it any way that you'd like. You can always create a custom purpose of evaluation and then just copy and paste it every time you get into this document. Is the student in school? Yes, or if they're not, type in something here. You'll notice that right now, if I don't fill anything out here, it's not going to say anything about the student not being in school. But as soon as I type something in here, uh, because recent injury, I'm gonna put injury. Um, oops. So now I press save and preview. It's gonna show us. Um, it's somewhere in here and it'll say that she is not in school because of a recent injury. Anyways, it's somewhere in here, I promise. That's kind of how this system works. It's just sometimes when you have a full narrative, a little bit hard to find. I should be able to find it though, I'm surprised. Usually something that um, that you recently changed pops up in blue, but it's very possible. Let me unclick, is the student in school? And now press save and preview. You know what, I'm gonna do a little quick thing here. I'm gonna press command F and make this easier on myself and just write injury. And now you'll see, here it is. Ariel is not currently in school because of a recent injury or because recent injury. So I didn't read the sentence completely. If I would have see right here, it says fill in student is not in school because I should have known to write it in because of recent injury. So my bad, but that's how easy this is to use. After a few times, you really start to figure it out. Um, continuing on, you'll see what type of classroom, who does the students, who does the student live with, you know, King Triton, Queen Athena, and her six older stepsisters. She's already receiving SLP for a lost voice, and I thought she might need it, might need some counseling, so I put that in here. Any other services the student needs? Interview. So this is kind of where you where you would say who was the interviewee that you talked to about this student. So I put Queen Athena, um, her mother, all that good stuff, some history of health any concerns from the parent and what type of evaluation this is. All right, so under evidence of information, this is kind of where we get into to more about the student, you know, how does she communicate? Where was the location? I didn't mark anything here because I put down here under the sea, you know, fill in. The assessment was completed blank under the sea. So that's what I did. Everything that you actually put on here this one I do want to talk the assessment tools because as you can see I completed the bot 2 with Ariel and then I put in my interpretation right here. So with that I do want to just I'm just going to put one just so when I press save and preview you're going to see that it's going to show me it should go right to near the bot scores. It's not going as as close as it usually does. But as you can see it gives us the bot grid which you cannot yet fill out on Double Time Docs. It may be coming soon, I would imagine, but underneath that, you can see right here, is exactly what I wrote in as the summarization of the BOT2 assessment that I completed with Ariel. Then what you would do is once you download the file, once you're completely done with the file, you press download, it will download with this grid and you can easily go in and just put in your numbers real quickly. So I think that's something that Jason and Scott are working on, but it might be a, a few weeks or months before that completely gets in there. Um, let's go back. I don't know why I still have that open. Let's go back here and show you a little bit more. All of these assessments will do the same exact thing. So say I did the print tool. Again, I'm not going to see the grid, but I can type in my interpretation real quick. And we go down, you can type in other assessment tools as well. Of course, the grid won't show up for those other assessment tools, but you can do that. Would you like to include a bulleted list of your assessment tools on the report? I always do this, so I always click yes here. And use of a validity statement, which is, you know, was was the test valid? It'll kind of give you a, a template already in there, just kind of saying all tests used were valid and, and directly and um, were were available to use with the student in age appropriate. So I did add a little bit in here for a custom validity statement and all it did was it added it to the end of this um, standard validity statement. So that's cool to realize. 
Um, occupational profile, I'm not going to go into that one, but uh, I guess I'll go over it really quickly. Least favorite subject and why favorite subject. So kind of that interview with the teacher or with the student, I mean. Um, what supports are currently in place, which is great, and what are the barriers to student participation right now? Any routines, any student goals? So if you did a student interview, you can do that here. What does the student want to be when he or she grows up? And just note that maybe this is a first grader and they have no idea what they want to be when they grow up. All you have to do, I put human for Ariel. All you have to do is delete that. And now this sentence will not show up in your report. And so you don't have to worry about going and finding that and deleting it from your report. It's just not going to show up. It knows that you didn't type anything in here. So it's just going to omit that part of the, of the narrative when you print it out or save and download. So now... Uh, behaviors, transitions, all that good stuff. Following directions. Do they have appropriate affect? Did they show eye contact? Do they have good sitting posture? That's always one that sometimes I forget to that I forget to report on. And so by using double time docs, it's really easy. Hey, sitting posture. I need to I need to check that. Even if it's just hey, it's good. Well, that shows that in my report that I did check it. Are they able to sustain attention? So all that good stuff. So motor skills, this of course gets into, now we're looking at ability to access the playground, um, physical education, PE, can they use everything in the classroom? Can they navigate the classroom? I know in here I believe is where, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, is about using, oh here it is, right-handedness, the type of grasp that they use, and do they use adequate pressure? Do they have an open web space, again, if you don't click something, then it just doesn't show up. So if you don't want to put something in, that's fine. Just just don't click it. Uh, let's see here. Scissor skills, cutting. I put in here that she had no idea how to use scissors. That's because, you know, she likes to collect things, and, but she doesn't know what they're for. So she collects scissors but doesn't know how to use them. Um, coloring skills. All this good stuff is really in here. And I don't really want this to go on too too much longer I want you to get on to double time docs and get your free trial going so I'm going to see there's a lot here but it's nice because it takes it it only takes a few seconds to actually type something in so near point copying you know you can press 10 a little trick instead of having to use your mouse just press the tab button you go down to the next one and then you write 80% um, far point copy probably not gonna happen that she has 10% near point copy and 80% far point copy legibility so I'm gonna change that to 80 as well and so I'm not going to go into the social emotional behavior skills, but there is a lot there. Likewise, the adaptive skills and self-help skills, can the student take care of themselves at the school? But I do want to show you really quickly this summary. Again, relative strengths. You can check all the different relative strengths. Then you can also go into what is currently being modified or accommodated for, for the student. Are the strategies that you've put in place working? What are the areas of needed support? I put classroom tool use, technology, accessibility, and written expression, and any other comments that you have there. Is OT recommended? Boom, right there. I'm gonna click yes. I'm gonna press save and preview. It's gonna scroll all the way down to me right here. At this point, OT services are recommended to address the areas of need mentioned above. As Ariel's function, functional participation includes improves it is anticipated that OT will be discontinued unless additional needs are identified by the IEP team so that is like the key thing right there when you press yes on our OT services needed that sentence is going to to appear in your report again I'm gonna click on that it's gonna take me right back to that question I click no I click save and preview and you're gonna see that sentence is now no longer there in fact, it says, at this time, OT services are not recommended because Ariel's deficits cannot be addressed by school-based OT. All right, so after that, you get down to recommendations. So right here, I'm just going to click again. I'm going to click on modified scissors, and it's going to take me right to under the recommendations. Now the recommendations page is open. Again, all simple recommendations that you can make just by the click of a button. You don't have to go through and type, it, type them in. You can just say, oh, they need, uh, Ariel needs supervision on the play structure, you know? simple as that and then you see all these different different um, accommodations and modifications that you can easily recommend with the push of a button then say there is something that you don't see on here there is always at the bottom 
several spots where you can put in another, a different other accommodation that maybe wasn't listed above. So that's what there is to it. You can add um, student needs access to an uh, iPad. I don't know, something like that. Let me capitalize that. Press save and preview. And now look at that student student to have oops did I really butcher it that much student to have access to an iPad save and preview now we have student to have access to an iPad right there in the recommendations easy as that so I'm going to close that up I'm going to now close everything here all this is good to go. I'm done with my report. I've saved and I previewed it and I like it. I'm gonna hit that save and download button right there. And you're going to see now it's asking me where do I want to save this to. I'm just gonna go ahead and well save it wherever it saves to real quick. And then I will actually upload that final report on actually just below here. You'll be able to access this report from this website, whatever website you're watching this video on, you'll be able to access that assessment report and you can see exactly what the double time docs report looked like once I went through all of this and completed this. So, well, that about wraps it up. That is double time docs in a nutshell and how to use it. So I hope you guys will take uh, Jason, Scott and I up on that, um, that free trial right here, free seven day trial. All you have to do is go to doubletimedocs.com and hit, click on that link that I showed you earlier that's right up at the top right that says free seven day trial. If you like what you see and you wanna use this as your template, or maybe even your entire school district wants to use this as their template, they have an option for that as well. So um, use that promo code OTSH20 to get 20% off your first paid purchase from doubletimedocs.com. Be sure to do that. I hope it helps you guys. And um, yeah, I wish you the best of luck in writing your assessment reports. and. And I hope this is for you. If it's not for you, no pressure. I don't want you to use something that's not for you. But uh, for anyone out there that will like it, it's available for you. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that introduction to Double Time Docs. Again, Double Time Docs is a software that helps OTs, PTs, and SLPs, or at least soon will be able to help SLPs write school-based assessments for evaluation for special education. So be sure to check that out at doubletimedocs.com to get your free seven day trial and use OTSH20 to get 20% off your paid subscription. And uh, yeah, that wraps it up. Thank you again. I'm Jason from the OTSchoolhouse.com and the OT Schoolhouse podcast. I'll see you next time on the podcast or online. Have a good one. Bye-bye.